it before, and the Lord's helped me. I'm thankful that I'm here. I'm back at church, missing like I've been forever. Been forever since I've seen it. Uh, but I'd like to see all the smiling faces. Everybody's the greeters. I always love the door greeters. You guys are special to me. Uh, Pastor Tom, I give him roses and flowers. I've told him ever since I started coming here, and he said it again tonight, is that he wants to get people help. He wants people to get it. He wants them to come to the Lord, the altars he talked about. And every time uh, me and Angie and I, we've talked about it, uh, that Tom always says, you're here, we want you to get help. We want you to get help. And that means a lot to me. Wherever he went, I don't know where he went to. There he is. He's always said that and he stood out to me. So I love the Lord. He's been so good to me. So many blessings he's given. There's hard spots in life, uh, but that's just part of it. So I'm thankful for all that he's done for me, for bringing us back to church. Still got my family in church with me. The Lord's good. Love you guys. The church must be living on it. The Bengals fans' prayers is finally made it to God's ear. That's good. I can tell you, if the Cleveland Browns ever get there and everybody's still living, somebody will shout. That's right. That's what I'm saying. If we're still living, there'll be some shouting. Yeah. Uh, while everybody's fired up about the game, we're going to try to do it. I think we learned about 10 minutes more church time, so you're in good spirits now. I'll take you stay there. <laughs>
You can just feel the unity among the people. You can just experience a lot of good things happening here. And uh, I, I appreciate that so much. And uh, I, I love the Lord. He's never, he has never let the fork down one time. Been born and raised here. Paul's been born and raised here. We can't tell you a bad time that, that the Lord has never let me fork down. And uh, he's been good to, to this group of people. And uh, we, are, uh, we are still going on what was started many years ago. We're still fanning that flame that they started on this creek bank several years ago. And uh, God's just, uh, just done great things here. And I, I appreciate it. I appreciate that so much. If you have your Bibles, we're going to read a couple of verses in Exodus. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. And uh, the Lord gave us a thought this week. Well, actually, two weeks ago. And uh, I was jotting notes down. I was writing things down. And I thumb away. And I, you know, did, did that for several days. And uh, finally, he lined me out this week on the direction to go. But uh, I, I appreciate the Lord. And thankful for what he does for us. He's good to us. Verse 15, chapter 14 says this, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Now there's a whole message right here. But lift up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. The phrase that the Lord give us this week, and, and like I said a couple weeks ago, the thought come to me through a song, and uh, it's this. Use what you got to make what you want. Use what you got to make what you want. You know we all got stuff, right? How many of you men have been working on a project, you go out to the barn or out to the garage, and you have to use what you got to make what you want? Now, that happened a lot living out here in Otway. Because it's 35 minutes to get what you need. 35, 40 minutes to really get what you need. So, you have to use what you got to make what you want. And the uh, uh, background of this, God, God made a threefold promise to Abraham. And uh, in, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 4, He would be the father of many nations. That's, that's one promise. His seed would be as numbered as the grain of sand. And all the world would be blessed by, by His nation. That was the promise God gave him. God also told Abraham about the bondage that his people was about ready to enter into. Uh, Joseph moved his family to Egypt to escape the famine. Moses was discovered by Pharaoh's daughter. Let's give you a little bit of history here before we get to where we're going. Moses demanded that Pharaoh release the children of Israel in Exodus 7 through 12. God hardened Pharaoh's heart and would not let the children of Israel go. After the ten plagues, Pharaoh finally released the people. When Pharaoh's army pursued them, the people were trapped between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea. And the people started complaining against God. And Moses. That's where we're at here in the scripture. You know, when you are called by God, He equips you with everything you need. Now, when the Lord called me to preach, I thought He was joking. I mean, seriously. I, because I did not like to stand up in class and do any kind of essays in class or anything like that. I was backward, believe it or not. I was backward. And I didn't, I didn't like to do anything like that. Grandpa in Wednesday night church made us testify. That's the only time I'd ever testify because Grandpa wouldn't close the service until everybody in the building testified. All 45 or 60 of us, however many was here. 
Oh, Wednesday night, you had to testify. If you was hiding in the back seat, he'd say, hey, boys, I know you're under there. Get up and testify before we go on. He'd do that to us. So, but the Lord, when He calls you, He equips you. Now, a lot of people start this thing and stumble and quit on this thing. I'm talking about a Christian walk. But if you give your heart to the Lord and truly mean it, He will be there to help you every step of the way. He'll be there to help you grow in Him. He'll be there to help you understand the Scriptures, understand the messages, understand what this thing is about. He will equip you to for this walk. He will do that. It is important to realize that the power of God in us allows us to use ordinary things to do extraordinary works. God can do that with just ordinary people to do extraordinary things. When you use what you've got to make what you want, there will be times in your life when the situation seems impossible according to human limitations. You are, are, are not bound by those limitations. The reason why is this. Romans 8.37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. So therefore I've got God on my side. So no matter what the enemy throws up against me, Mark told, no matter what I have to face tomorrow, and I might have to face some tough stuff, who knows, God will be there with me ever. I have that promise. I have that scripture that He'll be there. He made me more than conquerors. You are, you are not bound by limitations. Through God's divine provision, you can truly overcome anything if you use what you got to make what you want. So what do you got? Well, here's what the Lord shows. Here's what I found in the Word. David had a sling. He killed a giant. Samson had a jawbone. And he killed a thousand men. The three, men, the three Hebrew boys had faith and lived through a fiery furnace. Daniel had, had prayer. And he slept in a lion's den with a bunch of hungry lions to come out to tell about it. Noah used his hands to build an ark. To escape the only flood that ever flooded this entire earth. In the Gospels, Jesus used a little boy's lunch to feed thousands because this lad was willing to give what he had. And God blessed it. And twelve baskets was left over. So there's a little children's song that I think we used to sing. Now, some of you that's been here a long time, correct me if I'm wrong. But I can remember singing a little song. Shamgar had an ox goo. David had a sling. Dorcas had a needle. Rahab had a string. And I found out I've been calling Tabitha Dorcas all week. Because I researched that and Dorcas in Greek means Tabitha. So I mean, because we're changing her name to Dorcas, by the way. Samson had a jawbone, Aaron had a rod, Mary had some ointment, and they were all used by God. Do you remember that little song that we used to sing here? And they were all used by God. The Bible is full of examples of use what you've got to make what you want. So, what do you have tonight? Think about it. What do you have to get what you need? Some of you have it, but you ain't been using it. Some of you have it, but you ain't been using it. God needs you to use it. To continue, you need to use it also to continue to live in freedom, but God needs you to use it to build up His kingdom. How about your talent? I got to thinking about the talents that's around this church, and man, we've got a lot of them. Clear down to where I have seen people come in here, Roger, that I didn't even know, and have a flat tar on their vehicle or a dead battery and Tommy Jones or Eddie Jones would make sure that they was taken care of. That's a talent. They would be out there in the cold, out there in the rain, fixing this complete stranger's automobile so they could get home. That's a talent. They've used that for the Lord. That's just one little example, but there's tons of that around here. 
here. There's a lot of talents that, that we're not using, but I wonder if we would really use our talent and, and, and ability for the Lord where we would go in 2022. It would be amazing, wouldn't it? God has blessed every one of us financially. If we're not using our finances to upbuild the kingdom of God, He can take them just like that. That's Scripture. That's Scripture. Some of you are great encouragers. And you do that. I get messages from you guys all the time from several in here. That encourage me to keep me going. Say they really enjoyed my message even though I felt like a failure. You know what I'm saying. But you'll get a message or two that week from somebody. They encourage you. You need to encourage one another. Use your encouragement to encourage others. Some of you are just natural prayer warriors. But have you been doing it? Just, I'm just asking you, have you really been doing it? We are all made up differently, and God has designed it that way, all to make a good church. And I believe we got one of the best around here. I do. I believe we got one of the best around here. And God has used all of those, all of those things for his glory. As the people begin to turn against Moses, he consulted God for a solution. This speaks volumes about Moses' character. He knew that he was called and sent by God, therefore he went to God. He didn't panic. He didn't give up. He didn't turn back. But I'm afraid, I'm afraid that in the day and age we're living, in this modern day, that a lot of people, it's been mentioned several times today, COVID has cost a lot of people salvation. I hate to say it that way, but I've just got to tell you the truth. I've got to tell you the truth. They've used that for an excuse. And they've stayed home. It's easier for them to stay home. I'm going to tell you something. If, if some of these people that claim to be members or, or, or people that come to our church, and you see them out at Walmart, or at the grocery store, or at a restaurant, or at a ball game, thank you. When you see them out, you kind of wonder what's happened. I'll tell you what's happened. They let the devil suck them dry. They stayed out too long. I, I read a story. And I wasn't even going to use this. But I read a story. I don't even remember where I read it. It might have been on Facebook. One of you might have shared it. But it was a it was a story of a man that kind of gave up on his church. He hadn't been coming. And he, he just stayed home. So one day, the minister, Ralph, he knocked on the door of the man's house. He said, Hi, preacher, good to see you. He said, I want to come in and visit with you. Well, he said, come on in. The man had a great big fire built in the fireplace. And they sat there in their chair, and the preacher got the poker. He reached out, and he pulled out one of them coals out away from the fire. And he let that Cold was bright when he pulled it out of there. It was, it was glowing big time. But they sat there long enough, Jackie, for that far to kind of go down. And it kind of started getting dull. And about that time, it just became a puff of smoke. And the preacher got the poker and he pushed it back into the fireplace. And as soon as he pushed it back into the fireplace, that thing took it right back off, just like that. The preacher looked at it and never said a word this whole time. The preacher looked at it and said, well, I think I'll go to the house. He said, okay, I'll see you to the door. He said, by the way, thanks for the sermon. I'll see you soon. <laughs> you can't make it by yourself. You need God's people. You need the church. This is where the fire is. This is where the fire is. We've got to help each other to make it. Thanks everyone else. Moses was standing on the banks of the Red Sea. He needed to get to the other side of the sea. They couldn't swim. Or they couldn't call in a boat. They couldn't call the National Guard or text Uber. They was in a hard place, wasn't they? God responded by asking Moses why he approached him about the problem that God had already equipped him to solve. Here's where we're getting into the message. He instructed Moses to use his rod. Moses trusted God and knew exactly what to do. He told the people that they were about to witness the salvation of the Lord. i got to stop here just for a minute. There's been a few times in my life, both from a song or a testimony or a sermon from our pastor or a lesson from our teachers 
that I have been warned by the Holy Spirit that I was about to have God show up in my behalf. Hallelujah. And when you're on that other end and you need God to show up for you, and He does, you better give Him the glory and thank Him for coming by your way. Oh my goodness, when Moses told these people, hey, the Lord is about ready to show up on our behalf. No doubt there was a lot of who days that day, wasn't there? There was a shout and a praise of the Lord. When Moses stretched out the rod, the Red Sea parted, the Bible says, and the children of Israel crossed on dry ground. You know, as you so journey here on this earth, it's important to remain focused on your destination. It is. It's very, very easy to get distracted in 2022. Very easy. It's very easy to think that what you're doing don't amount to too much. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're coming to church and you're bringing those little ones, and you're faithful to church and you're coming, God takes record of all that. When you need Him on a Tuesday morning, you can hit your knees. You don't have to worry about 185 prayer warriors here at Beachport praying for you. You can get a hold of the Lord yourself. In your automobile or in your bedroom or, or out in the garage, wherever you're at. If you are faithful to God, He'll hear you and He'll answer your prayer. That's how that works. When you understand that God has placed you on this path, you can be assured that God has equipped you with everything you need to make it to the other side of your obstacles. See, you are never stuck. Because God has already provided a way of escape. Now those of you that I was your youth pastor, some of you is here tonight, I wore you out with this verse. I told you it's to mark it in your Bible. I told you it's to highlight it. I told you it's to try to memorize it. But 1 Corinthians 10, 13 is a good verse for you young people. You've got real good memories. Remember, look it up tonight. Highlight it in your Bible sometime. 1 Corinthians 10 13 says this There hath no temptation taken you but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are in, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now that's a promise. That's a promise that we can bank on. We can count on. He'll be there for us. Moses was their leader. He was their leader. But Moses was a leader that listened to God and let God do the leading. And I, I'm, I'm going I'm to say right here that we got the same kind of leader here. Listens to the Holy Spirit. Gives the messages we need. Listens to the Holy Spirit. Let's God do the leading. Moses let God do the leading. He led them with a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. That's what the Bible says. God knew where they, He was leading them. He placed the Red Sea in their path. That, that's why He equipped Moses to lead the people through the Red Sea. Here's why. To show the people that Moses was trusting in God, that and in a God that never fails, that never has, that will always be there in the time of trouble. God let this thing happen so that He could get the attention of the children of Israel and let them know who the God was that they were serving. You know the enemy, the enemy that they was that Moses was facing. He wasn't alone with that. This same enemy was God's enemy too. Because Pharaoh worshipped idol gods and he believed himself to even be a god. You know what? Here it is. I want you to remember this. You don't remember anything else. I say tonight, I want you to get this right here. An attack against God's people is an attack against God. Do I need to say it again? An attack against God's people is an attack against God Himself. So, we got a lot to be thankful for tonight, don't we? Amen. Knowing that hell can rise up against us, but God's still on our side. No matter what the devil boos and hollers and screams at us, we got a God that's going to 
Lord, have our back and take care of us. Therefore, God did not allow the enemy to harm his people. So when Satan comes up against you, all the demons come up against you, and they, they do all the things they do to you, don't tremble, don't fall, don't fret, because that's the same enemy that God's fighting for you right there. I believe that here's where we're at as a modern day church. So many people are living life in survival mode. And I'm going to tell you why that is. I'm talking about whole households living so fast in a week's time it's Friday. I mean Monday starts and it's Friday. It's probably a little fast for you, Ed Ralph. You're 91 years old, the oldest person in the building. He said time's going fast for him as well. Don't think the enemy can't use good things against you. Because he can. Here's the thing. We as a child of God have got to set some priorities and some standards that we're not going to waver on or we're not going to bend or we're not going to be weak on. We've got to have some stuff to throw against him to say, hey, you're not moving this. You're not getting this. Because the next thing you know, you'll quit reading your Bible. You'll quit the prayer time. You'll even talk about compromising some services, whether you want to go or not. I'm just telling you how it works. He's slick. He's slick. He knows how to do it. So that puts you in a survival mode spiritually. And I'm afraid that's where a lot of churches are at today. They're on that survival mode. That's not God's plan for His people. The children of Israel were, were surviving in Egypt in bondage. They was just surviving. God had a bigger and better plan for them. He wanted to get them out of the land of bondage and take them to a land that was flowing with milk and honey. God has a plan for you to give you an abundant life. Not a half-blessed life. Not a life with a few handfuls on purpose here. I'm talking about a blessed life. A complete blessed life. When you sell out to God and give Him everything you got, you get His attention. And when you get His attention, you get His favor. Hallelujah. I'm glad I got a little bit of favor in my life sometimes. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has a plan of abundance for your life. You don't have to, to be afraid of the enemy. You don't have to be discouraged by obstacles. Trust God's divine provision and use what you've got to make what you want. I'm going to finish with this. I've told this before. Some of you new ones may not have heard it. But many years ago in a faraway land, you young people like this. There was a water bearer that worked for the king. And every day this water bearer would, bearer would go to the brook. And he had a, a big pole across his back with two large jugs on each side. He would dip down in the brook and he would fill those jugs full of water. And he would head back to the king's house. And there was one of the pots that had a crack in it. And it was discouraged, Tyson, because he didn't feel like that he was living up to his standard for this water bearer. And one day, he got the courage to ask the water bearer. He said, I'm so ashamed that every day you get back here, you only have a pitcher and a half of water because of my crack that's in the, the side here. He said, why don't you just throw me away and get a new pot? So the water bearer spoke back to the pot and he said, I would do no such thing. He said, as you notice, when we start back the path, there's only flowers on your side of the path. He said, every day, twice a day, I go get water for the king's table. And I water those flowers back to the king's table. And he told him, he said, I knew about your flaw. 
That's why I planted seeds only on your side. He said, because of your imperfection, because of your flaw, you are able to water the flowers that brings a smile to the king's face when I put them on his table. So therefore, don't you dare, church, let the enemy tell you that you're a piece of garbage, that you can't be used, that God can't do anything for you. You've went too far. You've messed up too much. Because this God I'm serving, this God I know, takes an imperfection and turns it into something. So every last one of us tonight has got something. And we need to start using what we got to make what we want. Amen. That's what the Lord gives us. Let's all be saved. Amen. I'll tell you what, I, I was worried to death about this message. I was worried to death about it. But I thank the Lord I found him here tonight. If I was giving you this, I, I appreciate the Lord showing up. I don't care if you like it or not, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed giving it. I felt good. But if there's anybody that didn't pray to anybody at all, anybody at all, every head bowed, every eye closed, I don't, I don't know what in the world's keeping you from coming and getting the victory you need. And I don't know why you want to deal with it another week or deal with it another day when you can come and get peace right now. That peace of God can fill you and change you and your situation. Anybody at all will step back. Nobody's looking on. We'll get a mask. We'll come in and pray with you. Won't you come? Won't you come? Anybody at all need to pray now? That's how quick the trumpet can sound, isn't it? Yeah. You're not ready. It could be that quick. Unexpected. Amen. All hearts seem to be clear. We've got another pastor for you. Board members, seven o'clock Wednesday night. Jimmy Jones will be here. All right. Okay. Y'all have a great week. See you Wednesday night.